Yes. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Whoever said, we're fun, we're not professional. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special live stream edition of Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have one of my favorite people, director extraordinaire Casey Calvert, Hello. whose newest film for La Cinema Going Up has just released. We are also joined by another one of my favorites, the marvelous Seth Gamble, who is also now directing for Wicked Pictures. And then we have Victoria Vox and Maya Wolf, who I have never had the pleasure of working with, but I'm sure will also become fast favorites as well. Yes. So, fun fact, um, I actually shot Casey and Seth together in starring roles for a movie I directed for Wicked Pictures called Sexual Fidelity about a girl who has a podcast. Hmm. <laughs> Art imitating <laughs> life? Hmm. But anyhow, uh, we're not here to talk about my movie. We're here to talk about Going Up, which is a film about theater life and the complex relationships that often arise when people come together to create a stage production. So um, for our audience, I just want to let you guys know we will be taking questions, but I'm going to be doing the Q&A at the end of the episode. So if you have any questions that you want to put into the chat room, please save them for the end. Um, the first part of this interview is going to be me asking them questions, and then we will open up the floor for you guys um, and try to answer as many questions as we can, as long as they're not stupid. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Casey, let's start with you. Yeah. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about what this film's about and like what your inspiration was for this film? So, going up to me, it's a movie about theater, but it's also really a movie about the relationship of man versus time. Mm. And the clock is ticking, we're always running out of time, and that conflict, mm -hmm. and that internal conflict, and that external conflict, and that storytelling conflict. Um, my inspiration for the film uh, kind of arrived in a backwards way. Uh, I was originally talking with Les Cinema about doing a musical. They had asked for a musical and that face, exactly. And I was like, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, so I came up with a treatment for a musical based on it's the opening night of a musical. Um, because I didn't want to do the kind of musical that was like spontaneous song and dance. I wanted to have the music incorporated into the story. Mm -hmm. um, so I came up with this idea of a story about people putting on a musical. It's opening night. I wrote this treatment. I made a budget, took the budget back to Lust, and they were like, mm, maybe not a musical. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> maybe not a musical. I need studio time and I need rehearsal time if we're going to do dance numbers and all of these yeah. things I need I need six weeks to make this movie and it was yeah. expensive mm -hmm. um so we decided no musical mm -hmm. uh but they really loved the treatment and so I took the musical elements out of the treatment and stayed with the story of it's the opening night of a play it's community theater and just built the story around the structure of the clock is ticking we only have so much time. Are we going to be able to do this thing as everything's going wrong? Oh my God, wow, that sounds so familiar. I wonder why. It's like every movie I've ever fucking shot. That's, that's the thing is, you know, everything, yeah, everything I write has to come from real life. Like, mm -hmm. I'd be the worst fantasy writer. I just like, can't. Mm -hmm. like, everything has to feel real and be so real to me. Mm -hmm. And so... There's always this struggle in production of, I'm running out of time, I don't have enough time, and especially with going up, mm -hmm. like, running out of time. Gotta make this movie. We have the theater booked, we have to start shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could definitely, I definitely felt that with the pacing and the music mm -hmm. and the constant, like, you know, the next chapter would be um, preceded by, you know, so many minutes to yeah. curtain going up. So yep. it definitely had a sense of urgency to it, for sure. Um, Seth, you are a seasoned actor and now director. Uh, what were your thoughts when you first wrote this script? I thought it would be a really good chance for me to be vulnerable on camera. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have, uh, and I really loved it. I mean, I've been wanting to work with Casey for a long time. You know, like we never really, I've never really worked with her as a director before. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been like almost done a few times, but... I don't know. I, from what I gathered, Casey didn't feel like the role was good enough to mm -hmm. actually for us to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that once this script was written, she felt that I could deliver it, and I feel like I did the best I could. Yeah, 
I mean, so porn is known for like long days on feature sets, as I know we've experienced together mm -hmm. in aforementioned movie. Um, and this series does like seem really complicated. I, I have some more questions yeah. for you about the cinematography. Um, yeah. So how long were these days compared to other feature sets that you worked on? They actually weren't that bad, to be completely honest with you, for, my, for myself, like mm -hmm. my experience. Um, I just feel that Lust and Casey have like a really um, well, you know, they they have good budgets where they can have a lot of days mm -hmm. and they can really take time on what they want to take time on, mm -hmm. which not everybody's allotted that, you know, when you have that ability, it doesn't really jump into those, the past 12 hour mark, mm -hmm. which is like hell for everybody. <laughs> yeah. 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 We you know really I mean? try to not go over 12. I don't think we did. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That one day we were 12 and a half. Okay. Um, but we also had eight hour days on going up. That's amazing. It's funny because you say that, and I just remember not to always bring it back to the movie we did together, but do you remember when we had to shoot your last sex scene for that movie, and it was like 18th hour, yeah. yeah. and then you were riding Seth on top, and I don't know what happened. It somehow turned into like, it looked like you were in a bouncy ball, and because I think you guys were both like this close to falling asleep, and then like we just all like was, lost our minds. It was like 2 a.m. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I remember exactly where we were. Like, I have a picture in my head yeah. of exactly where that bed was. It was and I, of, uh, the old uh, Armstrong it was, house? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, Brad, yeah, it was Brad Armstrong's house. house. Um, yeah, and I just remember, like, it being really funny. Yeah. Like, we were at the giggly point. Yeah. 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 Delirious. The, the, like, laughing, but also, like, we wanted to kill oh, ourselves. Oh, I think we were shooting soft. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was, hard, and what I was doing in soft would didn't look like sex. <laughs> no, the hard we went in, but like, you know, generally. Yeah, we used up all our energy for hard. Which I think is great. Like, if you're shooting softcore, you should really, like, just let them just kill their energy on the hard and mm -hmm. just get the soft as yeah. good as you can. Because why defeat the energy of a hardcore scene that you're selling? Yeah. And, and that yeah. type of preference, you know what I mean? Yeah. That type yeah. of. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so. You're shooting for a wicked now. Mm -hmm. Are you guys still having to shoot softcore? I do. Is it still as awful? I write really big scripts. <laughs> <laughs> really big scripts. So my softcore is a lot shorter. <laughs> it's a time thing with softcore. You oh, have to yeah. turn in a certain amount of time. That's true. So if my dialogue piece is 12 minutes, I have to turn in eight minutes of softcore. Oh, man. Lovely. That's you know? fucking So yeah. the smart. idea is to, to write a better story so I don't have to do as much softcore. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. You, yeah. you don't have to shoot softcore? I do. Less. We shoot hard and soft at the same time um, because I don't have any specific length of time deliverables. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I do have an episode length mm -hmm. range right. that I have to deliver, mm -hmm. but we shoot hard and soft at the same time. I let the performers have sex for the length of time that they feel like those characters would have sex for. Mm -hmm. And then the episodes vary. Like in Going Up, I think the episodes vary from somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes, including hardcore. Mm -hmm. And the softcore versions are just shorter. Mm -hmm. You also like don't have to shoot like a ton of penetration, right? I don't have to, ha I don't have any specific deliverables when it comes to how much hardcore, how much softcore. Mm -hmm. I have to include a sex scene right. and that's this as specific as it gets. Right. Okay. Nice. Um, real quick, Ernie, you're having problems with that sun, aren't you? The sun is on the way. Do you need to, do you want to shut the blinds a little bit? Um, I'm, I'm good at, uh, the singles are working fine. Like, okay. Okay, I see. Sorry, everybody. Live streaming problems. Live streaming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so Maya, uh, you're relatively new-ish to the industry. How long have you been in porn? It'll be two years in a couple of days. Two years, okay. Yeah. Happy almost porn anniversary. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's been a good um, two years. <laughs> in that time span, had you done many features before this one for Casey? Yes. You um, have. Casey, we did this one in April? May. Oh, this was this May. This my fourth one, and then I'm doing another one next month. Okay. And then how do you feel about doing features with, like, heavy dialogue and acting versus, like, straight gonzo scenes? I like both, but I do like to get to do features and, like, stretch my acting skill. Mm -hmm. Before porn, I had done, like, a couple of plays and stuff, but never any, like, real acting. So mm -hmm. it's, it's fun to get to explore different characters. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have a preference between the two? No. Mm -mm. So you're just, you're open to either and yeah. each one's different and has its... Each one has its own like benefits. Like I love, you know, gonzo days. They're quick and easy and I get to have great sex. We just had a really good gonzo scene the other day. Um, 
but I like, you know, like I said, I like to get to like make something that is really spectacular. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with the time you get to dedicate to something in features, you can make something really cool. Yeah. yeah. I would find that like when I would shoot features, like the almost the whole time I was shooting it, I wanted to blow my brains out. <laughs> but then when it came out and you see the final edit, you're like so proud of yourself. Yeah. You know? A lot of hard work's put into that yeah. by like a lot of different people. So it's yeah. really cool to see it all come together. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then also too, like... I mean, long days on set also make for, like, great stories, yeah. you know? And, like, you really get to bond with the people that you work with, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, Victoria, since we're on the subject of stage drama, uh, you studied Shakespeare. Uh, yes. And, uh. in fact, you have said that it taps into your inner kink. Absolutely. Can you explain that? Okay. Uh, well, Shakespeare is a kinky person. Um, uh, uh, I, I suppose it's a bit misleading to say that I studied Shakespeare. I have a writing and editing degree and I took many, many classes on Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think out of any tragedy, comedy, uh, romance he's ever written, there's yet to be anything quasi-normal. Mm -hmm. at all about the relationships that happen in anything that's a Shakespeare work. Um, and I like that about mm -hmm. his writing. And did you, have you always, because I know you're also, you are the front woman of a band. Yeah. So you're clearly like comfortable on stage. What's it like doing like feature acting? How, was that something you had a lot of experience before coming into porn? Um, okay. So the way that being on stage compares to being in front of a camera is is very different. Being on stage is kind of like this situation now. It's live. Whatever mm -hmm. happens, happens. There's mm -hmm. not a redo. And if there's a redo, people still got a version of it with their cameras in front of you that you can't control. Mm -hmm. um, so being on stage will always have an edge to it that intimidates me a bit more than being on camera. Mm -hmm. um, however, being on camera is more of a playground because I can say, uh, I can say, I can deliver the same line completely different. Uh, very quickly and be surprised with the outcome uh, when the movie or short or whatever comes out. Um, I like I like the ability to uh, play with my interpretation of a character that I'm given on camera and on stage I try to just be myself mm -hmm. as much of it the most extreme version of it that I can so that I'm still performing but on camera I try to understand the vision that's given to me with a character, and then I try to add my interpretation to that character. Right. If okay. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Casey, like I mentioned before, I want to talk a little bit about the cinematography for this film. Yeah. I noticed that you did a lot of long, steady cam shots, a mm -hmm. lot of walking shots, mm -hmm. um, a lot of shots that in my head are like, man, she had to block the fucking shit out of that. <laughs> I just like, it's funny because I watch it and in my head I just think like, oh God, what a pain in the ass that would have been to shoot. Not like, oh, how beautiful that looks and how well that turned out. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, you definitely like let the scene breathe and the actors act, which you don't normally see in porn. Um, one cheap trick that we use in porn a lot is um, using two cameras, getting a wide and singles of each actor so we can easily chop up the dialogue and edit. Um, this saves us having to redo lines from the beginning if there's some kind of mishap. In fact, I mean, I know that for myself, like I've had experience and I'm sure all of you guys have witnessed this or whatnot where you get an actor who just like cannot remember their lines and you literally have to feed them like lines one by one and you can make that work in the edit if you have those those different shots, but that's not how you shot this at all. So were you planning on having those kind of shots when you wrote the script? And did that make you heavily consider the actors that you cast and, you know, people that you knew could remember their dialogue and can manage that? Yep. To all of it. Um, <laughs> I actually had blocking maps mm -hmm. that I drew, that I printed out uh, the floor plans of the theater. It had two levels to the theater. Um, and I printed them out and I drew blocking maps of where everyone was at every point in time because the story's not literally in real time, but it's kind of in real time. So I, I planned out exactly where everybody was. From the very beginning, I actually 
put post-it notes on a wall and moved people around. And so you'll see shots where someone walks, uh, for some reason I did it to poor Derek Pierce a million times, <laughs> where he came in to set to walk from one room to the other. Mm. And that was all he did that day. <laughs> was hang out with us for like six hours to walk from that room to that room in the background of a shot. But it's kind of funny to like fuck with Derek and me. Oh, it's We love you, Derek. But yes, so I had one of the challenges for me in finding a location for this movie was I really wanted to explore the dynamic of people walking around backstage. Mm. That's really interesting to me. Um, Birdman was one of my references for this movie and there's so much of just walking in staircases and walking through space and people moving and people, you know, someone's walking this way and the camera's following them but other, someone else walks this way. And so all of my steady cam shots were planned before we got there. We had actually scheduled steady cam days where the steady cam came out and got built or days mm -hmm. when the steady cam didn't come out because it's such a logistics thing. Mm -hmm. I think we have 14 steady cam shots in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, it on average takes about eight takes to get a steady cam shot right mm. because you have to coordinate the camera movement, the sound guy's movement, and the blocking of everybody in the shot all mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. And so sometimes you get this amazing performance, but the camera missed it. Or sometimes the sound guy bumps into a wall and you have to reset. So there's just mm -hmm. all of these logistics with it. But that's what's fun for me. Mm. Shooting, shooting two cameras at the same time to make editing easy is not fun for me. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of no point for yeah. me in doing, like if I'm doing that, I, I could be performing right. and making more money and doing less work. <laughs> so, oh, so true. if I'm going to make a movie, I'm going to make a movie. <laughs> and I, I, I really only hire people who I trust to learn their lines and learn their blocking and bring something to the table. Mm -hmm. um, because I only make a couple movies a year, I can do that. Yeah, that's amazing. And it sounds like they give you the budget and the number of days to yeah, actually Yeah, we shot going up for 14 days. That's amazing. And we spent 12 days at the theater. That's amazing. Wow. What is that like? It's great. <laughs> it's, lovely. it's lovely. And it's also very stressful because there's so much time for something to go wrong. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. There's so much time for someone to get sick. There's so many days for someone, someone to, to cancel get that you've yeah. already heavily featured I in the movie. I had zero cancellations for going up. Wow. Wow. Zero, zero talent issues in any capacity at all. That's amazing. And I had 24 people in this movie. Wow. That's incredible. And most of them were non-sex. Wow. Um, let's, let's go over the characters that each one of you plays. Um, Seth, tell us a little bit about your character. Hmm. My character was, um, I was a, it was a, uh, I was a backup for, you know, the main actor in the movie. And, um. I feel like my character at first was just kind of like, he's kind of like this guy who like is exuding, like he's confident, but he's super insecure, like very, very insecure. And, um, and then I end up getting the lead role because there's a big chaos that happens. And when, how that starts to ensue is like, I'm trying to like, certain people I'm getting vulnerable with telling them like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And then some people I'm kind of like, oh, I got this, we're good. And then I'm, so I'm constantly playing like, I'm basically playing like an actor as an actor mm -hmm. acting the whole fucking time. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of acting with an actor. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was really, really interesting to like really play. Okay, so I'm on stage and I have to stage act and then I have to go into being, uh, then I have to go into acting like my, me playing the character. And then it was just, it was a different, interesting dynamic. And I really love the way Casey wrote it because uh, I had like a crazy, I had a great arc to my character. Mm -hmm. I also had, uh, I could, you know, I, I basically could ensue every single type of human emotion that's humanly possible in an amount of time you could do in an adult film, mm -hmm. which was like very rare to be able to be written that way. Mm -hmm. And I think too, it's, you know, it's her writing. I, I was just, I was trying to give my interpretation of it. So yeah, it felt, the writing definitely felt like very real, mm -hmm. um, and very conversational. Um, did you relate to your character in any way? Were there any aspects of him that you felt like hit home for you as a person? Um, I mean, yeah, you know, like I was an ex-drug addict that was full of fear all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I mean, I was playing to like those fears. And mm -hmm. It's easy. I'm like a very, 
overly eclectic human being. <laughs> I've been, I've lived in the worst places in the world. I've lived everywhere. So I have so many things and I'm one of those people that have to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I've met so many different types of people in my life that I'm able to like, and I analyze everything about everything. It's the most annoying thing ever. Mm -hmm. It's why I have to meditate so much just to like <laughs> not think so much. And, um, but I have, I, I've met this guy and I've also had places that I can kind of dig with my own stuff where I can really feel that of like, you know, one of the parts of the movie was my favorite part. It was like, I, I got to play out in my mind, my worst nightmare. Like, and it was weird because there's also like a, being an adult male performer also ensued in this character. Mm -hmm. There's this whole MO of like, you know, I need to get an erection in front of a bunch of people and it's like stage fright and yeah. like this whole thing. So there's like so many elements of that. I mean, obviously there's no guy in this business who can lie and say that's never happened to him mm -hmm. or it just didn't happen that day. You know, right. if it is, then dude, good for you. But yeah, I, I your day mean, is coming. You will yeah. fail yeah. soon. Yeah. It will happen. It happens it will happen. to everyone. It will happen. If you're in your twenties and you get to your thirties, yep. <laughs> you have to adjust. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's, it's, there's so much to explain about him. Like I just, um, it was just really cool. And you know, the, the, I, I had a lot of fun and I really liked being put in a straight jacket. It was really interesting. I felt at home. Cozy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just giving yourself a big hug. I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Maya, what about you? Tell us about your character. So my character starts as a stagehand and ends up becoming like his character, the lead of the role. So everyone, everything, everything goes wrong, everything possible. So both of the leads quit and I'm this kind of like timid stagehand who's always kind of wanted to try out for one of the bigger roles, but has been too afraid. I know all of the lines to the whole thing, but I'm just like scared to put myself in front of people. And she kind of gets forced into this position where it's like, you do it or there's no one else to do it. Like if you don't do it, we're fucked. And so I was just, oh, am I allowed to say that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was, that was fun. It was, it was cool because, you know, I am kind of a shy person. You know, most people don't expect that given that what I do for a living. But <laughs> I, I definitely related to her, like, you know, kind of being on the sidelines and knowing that I could do it, but just not having, like, the gusts to do it that mm -hmm. was that was relatable for sure <laughs> yeah i feel like yeah. all of us have had that um and then victoria let's tell us about your character my character's name was eliza um and she's so tired of your shit <laughs> she's still tired of your shit here today she, she is um is the correct term stage manager yes and okay. she's the stage manager yeah uh, so she is kind of like the belt on your pants. She's holding up the whole show. She's not the director, but she is in charge of everything. Um, and she really doesn't like Travis. She likes Susie. Uh, Susanna. Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> I got the smell. <laughs> um, uh, but she just wants it to go smoothly, and it's just not. Mm -hmm. It's just not. And then she's got this like conflict with her family. That's kind of a thing happening. Her dad's calling. She doesn't really want to talk to him. She's got too much to do. Um, she's conflicted about her inappropriate feelings towards Susanna. <laughs> um, uh, but she was definitely relatable to me because I have zero patience. I'm always trying to work on that, but I'm really not very patient. Neither mm. was Eliza. <laughs> um, uh, but she's just here doing what she can do, you know, answering the calls, uh, making her own and just trying to make it go smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> That's all she can do. Poor yeah. Eliza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can definitely, uh, I can definitely relate to that. Um, Casey, do you have a favorite scene in the movie? Um, my favorite scene is in episode five, the steady cam shot in episode five. Mm-hmm. Um, it's our longest steady cam shot. We walked, uh, one of the really cool things about the theater was that you could walk from the stage all the way around backstage and back onto the stage. Mm -hmm. So we started on the stage, we walk all the way around, we peek into the different dressing rooms, we go back on stage and then do some dialogue on stage and 360 it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just really cool and really beautiful because at that point in time, spoilers, the power is out mm. in the theater. And so it's all pitch black. 
and we're following Eliza and she's carrying these little lights and we set down lights and the light changes throughout the shot and they go onto stage and it's pitch black and they have a conversation about what the fuck are we gonna do? <laughs> um, wow. And it just came out, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not a shot from a porno. Mm -hmm. How many times did you have to shoot that? Do you remember? I think honestly, maybe five times. Yeah. And I probably didn't need to, but did. I did use the last take. Yeah. I did end up using the last take. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. But yeah, somewhere, somewhere between five and eight times feels safe to me to say. Mm -hmm. How involved are you in the editing process, speaking of? Oh, very. Mm -hmm. um, like I, don't, I don't send my footage away and then get back a finished movie. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Bryn is my editor. Um, he's also my partner. Um, cuts a rough cut for me. I make changes, I give notes, I also make notes on set if there's a take I really like that way. I can just send him my notes and he can edit knowing some information from me already. I'm kind of my own script supervisor. Mm -hmm. And we manipulate the edit together and do a bunch of passes and then Lust also gets to make notes and sends notes back and we do more passes and then we eventually have a finished movie. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. That was actually one of my favorite things for shooting for Wicked. It was the only company I ever worked for that let me do my own edit. Nobody else does. I send it and then I get it back and sometimes I'm very disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was really great. Do you still have that Oh, I'm fully in control of my edit or I'm you not are. shooting anything. <laughs> yeah, that's also how I feel. I'm not sending my footage to an editor in Canada to edit my movies. I concur with Casey. It's like, I can, I make really good money performing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to spend 12 to whatever amount of hours shooting it, writing a script, putting it all together, casting, w hoping that everybody shows up. And it's so much stress putting together mm -hmm. a project. Like I could just perform unless I'm getting to create something that I can get high off of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to get yeah. high. Like I yeah. used to like to get high. So yeah. I won't, that's a <laughs> new thing. It's a new, <laughs> it's a new way for me to get high. I'm yeah. like, this is cool. I made this, you know, yeah. and it's all mine. There's no one trying to like recreate because editing second edit is uh, an editor is a second director. It I really agree. is. You know I, mean? yeah, I think I so many people miss that that it's it's so much of it is in the editing. Yeah, it's hundred yeah. percent because you can you can sh you can send the we shoot we could we shoot a bunch of turds and someone polishes it really well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I can I send them a bunch of footage. It could be the best footage in the world. You put it together, it doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense. Like yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite scene in the movie, Seth? Um. I have a few. Uh, I'm trying to think of like the top, top one. My scene with Tyler Knight outside the. Um, there's an acting scene where I'm, I I find out that he uh, he doesn't believe in me at all. Mm -hmm. Like there's like no faith, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been there in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, being around people who have no faith in me, and uh, it was really cool to do that. And Tyler, we the first time we'd act together, acted together, which was like really cool. Like I think we really had a great chemistry with acting and stuff. But I really thought that was a great moment mm -hmm. uh, for me. Yeah, I got up to, I was telling Casey, I only made it like halfway through the movie, but I got up to the part where you catch him talking about you without him knowing you're there. So yeah. I'm assuming this that... This is the next that scene. Scene. It's the yeah. next it's scene. It's the yeah. very beginning of the yeah. next episode. I'm, I'm going to finish the movie. You should finish Even though movie. I don't need yeah. to because this interview will be done. I'm going to finish the movie oh. because I'm actually enjoying it. Oh, well, thank you. Awesome. I am skipping through the sex scenes because That's I'm jaded and yeah. I'm bored. Yeah. 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 I just yeah. like zero <laughs> judgment yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, but the I'm acting is there. Watch your friends have Like for me, it's always very strange to be like, I'm going to edit my friends having sex now. And like shooting it is kind of fun because there's the barrier of holding the camera and so I'm like holding the camera thinking about shots thinking about lighting thinking mm -hmm. about what I'm doing with my bot like all of these things that I'd not really like my friends are having sex in front of me and then I go to edit it and I'm like my friends are having sex in front of me. <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> okay. It's funny how that that camera makes such a big difference. Yeah. It's the same thing when I have it in front of me. Sometimes like if I go to events where I feel uncomfortable and I don't really know people, I will offer to shoot photos mm -hmm. just to like, it gives me a yeah. purpose and it gives me like that, that barrier yeah. and it gives me a good reason to, you to introduce to, to pe yeah. myself to people and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, that camera is like, it's, it's, it's everything for that. Um, Maya, what about you? Do you have a favorite scene in the movie? Um, the favorite scene that my character is in is and it's funny because there's literally no lines in this part, but she 
is sitting in front of the mirror and she's like getting to actualize like one of her biggest dreams you know her i mean her dream is kind of small to be like the lead in a theater community group but still (laughs) it's a big deal it's a big deal for her it's a big deal for her she's like super like she really feels this emotion she like sits down and she's like almost like in tears about how excited she is about getting to do this it's really beautiful (laughs) um and then victoria how about you i do um there is a a dream sequence that happens uh, where Travis is living his nightmare, as it were. Um, and <laughs> prior to this happening, he's passed out because I, I, I don't know, can I, are yeah. these spoiler? I We're mean, spoiling yeah, okay, all right. the place, you're fine. <laughs> the movie's um, out. I've had to inject his penis to get him hard <laughs> because not only can he not get hard, but he's afraid of needles, so I have to do it for him. Um, which was hilarious. <laughs> very funny. Anyway, it's very um, funny. However, in the dream sequence, he's in a straight jacket, and I'm in a nurse costume coming for him with a giant it's syringe. Like it's a it's a barbecue meat injector, like a big uh, metal barbecue okay, yeah, meat yeah, yeah, injector yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like this long. Yes, it's yeah. very scary. And I sit down next to him, and I say a little creepy something, and then I just get a stab it right into him, <laughs> which obviously didn't happen, but it did go through the seat. It, yeah, <laughs> had to have good aim. <laughs> that's kind of fun that you're able to like incorporate that um like a nurse costume it was very very it's very much a dream sequence that's when seth and seth is in the straight jacket what a nightmare um yeah it's very much a it's a night it's a nightmare uh orgy sequence it's really what it is um it's like it's a version of the actor's nightmare right Right. It was amazing. Yeah. It was really fun. <laughs> that um, entry to that was so cool to watch. Um, <laughs> any other, like, fun behind-the-scenes stories that you guys want to tell us about before we jump into the chat room? <laughs> um, I don't have a fun behind-the-scenes story, but I will say that as a director, it's very cool for me to have three of my lead actors here and talking about their favorite scenes and no one was like, I really liked this time when I fucked this person. (laughs) Um, Because that's not what these movies are to me. Mm -hmm. And so that's great. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Um, Okay, let's turn to the chat room. I'm sorry, I just want to laugh because... The first, the second comment oh, is from Sean so Rivera. Funny. He's like, hey, I know all of you. He also worked on this movie a little bit. We actually, I didn't, I try to use Sean as much as possible. I'm just reading over here. His lighting issues. Um, so we had Sean a little bit, but Sean's a very busy boy. And, he is. Um, I actually got him yeah. for one of my shoots like next week or the week after and I like couldn't believe that I got the him. The secret is he's available on the weekends. Yeah, but nobody oh, shoots on the, the fucking weekends. I shoot on the weekend. <laughs> it's a for choice, Sean. Holly. This is true. I choose not to shoot on the weekends. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, uh, let's look at some of these questions. So, oh, whew, I'm going to murder this name. Vladislav, I'm very sorry, uh, asked, do you think it's possible for porn movies to increase budgets these days to create better storylines and have great decorations, just like in the case of mainstream movies? I mean, I kind of feel like that's what we're starting to see, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think we're having this movement back towards the big budget feature. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I yeah. yeah yeah do you do you like I'm I'm in my weird little less cinema bubble where my budgets are incredible and I'm very very lucky but do you like, well I think it takes I think way? it's taking like I think we're fortunate um I think I don't know what it is but like you know there's we're in this time period where you've Casey and I'm directing and there's a lot of more talent that like want to do things that are different which scare a lot of the corporate end of things. <laughs> They're like, what are we doing here? I don't know what the, you're sh- showing me. Because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the stuff that we shoot is very, you know, ad-like. It's mm-hmm. very, you know, overblown type of colorful... Content-driven. Content-driven, traffic-driven yeah. type of thing. So, uh, but uh, I can also see, like, based on, like, because I obviously, being where I'm at, I have to, like, I actually go on sites and I see where people are, like, you know, viewer viewerships being driven, and I I do see that the higher budget stuff where there's set direction, good lighting, and great acting, and 
you know, performances that are based on story and not so much based on sex uh, are actually getting higher viewerships. It's just going to take the companies to be willing to go like, huh, we can shoot 10 pole like projects and actually make a profit. Mm -hmm. That's really mm -hmm. what it's going to take. We need mm -hmm. companies to be able to get behind that and go like, Hey, I need, we, we are doing well with this. And like, not just think, cause ever, I think a lot of, a lot of, you know, the structure is like, let's, if we shoot a story, let's shoot a cool story within like a 60 minute ratio for one scene. And then we have this great one story scene. The one thing that I've been trying to implement with K2 does as well is like the series element of it. Cause it's like, let's shoot episodes that continue. Like let's let actors in our industry who are actually very talented actually play characters and like continue characters and become emotionally attached to characters. So people aren't just watching it based because everybody could just watch fucking. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. like what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. It's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean. So I feel like I, I feel like I mean I'm doing my best and everything I can to drive that home, like like to no degree. And mm -hmm. I think Lust is doing a very great job of it as well. And um, you know, there's there needs to be. I think there needs to be more of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I mean we're definitely seeing such an incredible change in like the way that movies are being made these days and received these days because. Yeah, I just think it's just that age-old belief that, like, porn stars can't act. Porn stars definitely can't direct. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can't produce a movie that's worth watching besides the sex. And I feel like we're starting to change that. But it's, it's, it's something that we're going to push back against a lot. I do, I do yeah. want to add something, and I think that this is important to think about. We're in an age where people, like, we have OnlyFans and we have mm -hmm. these other platforms. We can make a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you put it in that perspective, like, when you have people, like, are creating really amazing projects... And these companies are wondering why, well, why can't we get these girls and guys to want to shoot for us? Well, because you're not shooting anything that like entices them to want to get out of their house mm -hmm. and not like rub one out. So you have to like, if you want to shoot like the best people who are going to really give you a great type of content, you got to be able to be willing to go like, hey, look at this script and this thing, this concept I'm doing and look at what it's going to look like. Here's a visual of what I'm going to do. And they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'll show up for this mm -hmm. because it's not as easy to get people to show up for work anymore. Yeah, yeah that's true. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's that. It's like, okay, well, these companies want the best talent to drive them. Let's shoot stuff that they want to be in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's a yeah. big, that's something that's important. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I no, agree. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, next question is, um, Thomas Nash says, uh, do you see the current wave of porn filmmakers who focus on sophisticated features at a, as part of a movement, like the French New Wave or New Hollywood? This question, I guess, is for anybody. Um, I, feel like, I feel like porn as porn an industry changes every couple of years mm -hmm. and kind of reinvents every couple of years. And... From my knowledge of porn history, there have been multiple moments in time where the big budget feature was the thing mm -hmm. and was very important. And right now I feel like the industry is moving in two directions at the same time and one of those is the big budget feature and one of those is fan sites and performer driven content and all of that. And they're just so wildly different. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of to be determined if that's going to be a movement. I don't know if if anyone's ever going to name it something. Yeah. yeah. But, but that it, would be fun. I also <laughs> wonder, though... I'm down if, for a movement. Yeah. I'm down yeah. for a movement, yeah. Um, I also wonder, though, if this is, like, indicative of how everybody how the general public tends to see porn as only one thing. Right. Right? Everyone's mm -hmm. like, oh, porn is only stepsister, yeah. stepbrother, rough anal. Yeah. Like, yeah. because I went on Pornhub and that's what I saw and, mm -hmm. like, therefore all of porn is like that and everybody's being exploited and victimized and it's no more than that. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. like, what I try to explain to people is that porn is so many different things. Like, you want, like, you know, female-centric um, movies with a storyline, like, you have that. You want, like, superhero-type parody movies. You have that. You want straight gonzo um, with rough anal fucking. You have yeah, that. Yeah, you want, like, everything. you know, queer porn, you know, people of color. Like, mm -hmm. it's out there. It's just what I feel like we lack, what the mainstream media maybe lacks is, like, is porn literacy, like right. people don't know where to find and where to go to find the porn that they want to see. Yes, because yes. everyone just goes to Pornhub. Yeah. Because nobody talks about anything else well, but other than Pornhub. Pornhub. Mm -hmm. but yes, also, because Pornhub has a great marketing department. Yeah. No, <laughs> well, also, not just from Pornhub's perspective, it's like it takes like a, a group conscious of like 
you know, people who are producing, not like us on the floor, but like the bigger picture Mm -hmm. of, in my opinion, like being okay to market outside of what they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. We market everything we do the same way. And if we continue to market it the same way, we're never going to show people more because they're only seeing things from the same perspective. Mm -hmm. So no matter what we shoot, it's still getting put out the same type of direction. We're not, you got to, you got to, you got to completely change the marketing technique. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even like, I mean, I wouldn't even use an example, but like you look at like, you know, like a Vixen type of style of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when they came out, there wasn't really, there was stuff that we'd done like it, like where there was an X art or something to that uh, Mm -hmm. similarity. Mm -hmm. But like when they, they kind of came out and they changed this marketing technique to less about the porn and more about the brand. Mm-hmm. Right. So then you can kind of change that. So it takes as a whole, like the bigger people above who send us our budgets to go, Hey, well, let's try to market this completely different. Let's not use the same marketing techniques. So that way a wider variety of people can watch it and understand porn's different than what we're really watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a conversation I have with less cinema all the time because they like to do a lot of mainstream outreach. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the reasons why all our trailers don't have sex in them mm-hmm. because we're making movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Panther black. I got to answer this one because he sent it as a super chat. So thank you, Panther (laughs) though. I will say I, I would like to try to keep the questions more either specifically to the actors or regarding this movie. Um, because I, it's about this movie, but y'all paid $4.99 $4.99 to ask this question. So we're going to answer it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and actually I don't, I can't answer this I because answer this I question. don't work for them. You but can I know... answer this question. Okay. Oh, ma- you, okay. Yeah. Maybe Victoria wants to answer this. Yeah. Uh, do you think kink.com will bring bound gangbangs back? And do you all think they should add water sports into the mix just to go off on a completely, completely different, different tangent? Direction. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite different. Yeah. Uh, yes. And yes. I think that they will bring them back, and I think that water play is always a good time. <laughs> do you think do you that think they stop? I agree. Sorry, go ahead, Maya. Oh, yeah. you said, didn't, didn't the question ask if they thought water sports would be incorporated the scenes? Mm-hmm. Because that's probably really unlikely. That right? is, yes, it's yeah. very unlikely because of billing constraints. Oh, well, excuse me. Yes. Well, there's a difference between a want. And, yes. And, and then the actually legal happening. constraints yeah. and the billing constraints of working in this Visa business. And MasterCard will ding you for it. <laughs> Definitely got to get more creative because billing has changed mm-hmm. pretty, quite drastically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some companies that won't let you drink liquid <laughs> yeah. in scenes. No. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, we have a lot of weird restraints, Rules. I know, like with, with MindGeek that they're yeah. very particular about. A lot about. of compliance stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like we were talking about earlier that I'm very, again, very lucky in that mm-hmm. lust spilling is very lenient because we're making movies. Yeah. yeah, you guys don't really, you don't produce the kind of content that I think that MasterCard and Visa are we, looking at. Yes, we also and... don't do traffic-driven content. We don't, mm-hmm. lust doesn't make any traffic-driven content. There, mm-hmm. there aren't three updates a week on mm-hmm. lust cinema or on X Confessions. There's a movie a month. Mm. Mm. So it's only one update a month, but it's several episodes. Yeah, well, the, so for Going Up specifically, uh, we released episodes one and two on the same day. Episode one was free. Mm-hmm. And then you could sign up for a membership to watch episode two, and then we released one episode a week mm-hmm. after that. Fantastic. So for six weeks, or for five weeks, episodes came out. Um, okay, uh Hold on, there was a question up earlier. <laughs> this is actually kind of, this is an interesting question. Olsenate, Olsenator, uh, this is for Casey. If you actually went through with a musical, were you going to write the songs yourself? No. <laughs> you were. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> oh, that's great. That's I, yeah, I actually had a couple different people, including Victoria, we who I was going to work it. with. Yeah, we talked about it, who I was going to work with to help figure out the music, because that is not my area of expertise, which is one of the reasons why the musical was a very scary idea for me. Yeah, very scary. Um, okay, uh, Mega Fallen 28 um, wants to know, uh, Casey, who are some of your favorite filmmakers or just films that have influenced you on maybe how you shoot or perceive cinema? I always have a really hard time with favorite questions. Mm-hmm. I, for whatever reason, my brain is always like, favorite? Um, for going up specifically, uh, my two main comps were Birdman, um, which won an Oscar, and then Waiting for Guffman, which is uh, a very funny small indie movie about community theater. Um, but otherwise, I tend to uh, 
lean indie, if that isn't apparent. Mm -hmm. um, Sean Baker is a huge influence mm -hmm. of mine. Um, Jason Reitman's smaller movies are a huge influence of mine. Um, Joe Swanberg is a huge influence of mine. I really lean towards the like small indie, almost mumblecore, very lo-fi, very real. Um, mumblecore. Mumblecore. I've never heard that before. Mumblecore. Huh. Um, it's it's uh, it's what it sounds like. Like the like what mumble like what you would think mumblecore is is what mumblecore is. Um, and Joe Swanberg is a huge like he's a mumblecore guy. Okay. Um, and it's very like it's a lot of ad lib. It's a lot of like, very small budget, um, two people in a room having a conversation. Mm -hmm. and that's my favorite. Yeah, and I, I would say one of the things that I did notice about your movie was that um, it did feel very conversational. It felt real. It didn't feel like people were saying their lines. It felt, and I think a lot of that had to do with the steady cam and the movement mm -hmm. and the walking. It felt very natural. Yeah, even though going up definitely has a somewhat British comedy absurdist situation that these people are in, I still wanted them to feel like real people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Thomas Nash, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, Sean says that Ivy and Sean say hi. Aren't you on set? Are you on set? Yeah, he's on, actually, you know what? He's on set for Stella today because she sent me a text earlier saying that they have to shoot like a lollipop in a butthole and they're trying to like figure out like how to make that work. I've done that. It's like, it's obviously no, no, not no. a lollipop. No, but it's not a lollipop in a butthole. It's like, they're like using like a fake foreskin with the lollipop because they have to shoot. I don't know. It's like a oh, whole prop thing they have to thing do. Oh, a thing is happening. Have yeah. fun, you guys. Yeah. Clearly so working hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sean, I hope you worked that out because yeah. I did see that video about you guys trying to figure out how to light the lollipop in the butthole <laughs> shot and I was just like I'm glad that's not my job <laughs> um a few people are outraged that I've never heard of mumblecore yes, very like very it. sorry about that I appreciate all of this uh mumblecore standing that's happening yeah. in the comments right now yeah. Thanks, guys. yeah wow <laughs> Got schooled. Uh, the EMM man wants to know why La Cinema doesn't publish its films on DVD or Blu-ray. Does it not? They do not. I don't know why. Um, so the very first La Cinema film that was an original feature called The Intern did come out on DVD. Um, my guess, honestly, is that it probably didn't make as much money as they were hoping, and they can make more money streaming, and so that's what they do. It would be great if they made DVDs, but... You'd have to ask them why. I don't know. I can tell you right now. I'm sure that that's what it is yeah. because the DVD market is dead. I yeah. mean, I don't even have a DVD player anymore. I do. Uh, yeah. But I also have a nerd for a husband who mm -hmm. collects Blu-rays. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Not not adult movies. Just movies. Many movies. There's many movies in my house. <laughs> um. Okay. I don't know who this is. I don't know if anybody can enlighten me. Um. What's your opinion about the old Tinto Brass and his spot in adult movies? Have you, how have you heard of this? Okay, so this is not like a mumblecore thing. No, I've like, never I heard know of this Tinto. No, no, that person, Blaster Fiction Productions, should let us know who Tinto Brass is. Yeah, sorry, never heard, never heard. Um, the War Spawn wants to know if you would like to work on an adaptation of an adult comic or manga. Um... We actually just did one that I produced that uh, was guest directed. Um, her stage name of the guest director is R Triple X. Um, that she adapted from a manga and wrote, and it's about uh, three people and food and cheating and open relationships. And <laughs> it will probably come out in January or so, if I had to guess. So is it based on a specific comic book? It's based on a manga. Okay. Um, but I honestly could not tell you which one because that's right. not so much my world. Yeah, I only just was told what a manga was like a couple months ago and I totally forgot what it is. This, this, it's some, it's was, something that I'm supposed to sure. know about. I was <laughs> only told the, the Japanese name mm -hmm. and it's not in my brain anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Kira Noir was trying to explain it to me, and I was yes, she loves right. she loves all of that. Yeah, yes. I, was, I was just like yeah. comic books. 
Um, okay, guys, we are going to wrap up this interview. Um, we have been going for almost an hour. And uh, if anybody has any questions, burning desires, oh. Hi, Alice. throw them in. Hi, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alice. I don't know who you are. She's Hi. in the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so is there anything that any of you guys wanted to add before we wrap this up? Besides go see the movie? Yeah, yeah go, watch, go it. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian Smith asks, how are the scripts written? Is it just dialogue followed by they have sex? Okay, so that's, that's sort of an interesting yeah. question because some people do wonder, like, do you literally script, script the out the sex no. scene? No, so and my no. my scripts look exactly like a main screen a mainstream script and there will be a line maybe there'll be two or three sentences if I want to communicate some tone mm -hmm. but it'll essentially be like they kiss and then sex scene between the two, then like the two character <laughs> names and mm -hmm. I put it in bold so it's very apparent that it's a sex scene mm -hmm. and that's it. I think a lot of people are very disappointed to find out this information. Yeah. I've had a lot of fans be like, I want to see your scripts, I want to see your scripts. And then I'm like, yeah, sure, my I'm happy to share. And they're like, oh, it's not sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just words. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, for me, my personal opinion is that you guys are all professionals and I'm not gonna like micromanage your That's work. how I feel also. I feel like you know how to have sex, yeah. you do it a lot, and like I'm not Sean going to. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's question is, who's the best lighting guy in the biz? You know, um, Steve Matthews is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I probably... It's going to make him fucking nuts that I just said that. Sean knows the answer to that. Sean does. Sean does, in fact, know the answer to that question. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. We love you, Sean. He's number one. Um, okay, so we have a question from Thomas Nash. I feel like I could ask each of you guys this question. Um, he says it's a dumb question, but it's not. Uh, someone gives you a pirate's level money for a budget. And by the way, for if any of you who don't know, um, Pirates was like the big yeah. was biggest. at one point the biggest movie ever made. I, I don't know if that's still the case. I it so, is my understanding that budget wise, Pirates did actually cost a million dollars. But so maybe Star that's, Wars was up there with Star Wars too. was also very expensive. Yeah. Those um, two were probably the most expensive. I know that uh, Bryn's movie Upload was very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, this movie was very expensive. Mm -hmm. Like in the in the scope of modern day porn, going up was very expensive. Mm -hmm. It was worth it though. So, anyways, to finish the question, um, someone gives you pirates level money for a budget to make whatever movie you want. What's your dream project or part? We'll just go down the line. Seth, we'll start with you. Huh? That's a loaded question. So, whatever money I want, I would shoot a five season show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do. I'd write a five season show. Uh, Any particular subject? I veer a lot into. Uh, uh, I like things that have cliffhangers and like keep you enthralled. So it's very drama thriller. Um, I also write around my characters a lot. It's really hard to explain what I do because what I do is I try to write like emotionally connected characters, and then I write a story around the arc of these people. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like how I write. So I keep like the characters are interesting and there's like a story around these characters, mm -hmm. but their emotional connection with each other is what tells the story. Mm -hmm. So I would do something that would be something I'd want to do it mm -hmm. probably shoot like, you know, cause that's what people are watching. Yeah. Who watches, who'd rather go to the two hour theater or watch Breaking Bad? For, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, the series mm -hmm. is the way mm -hmm. to go. Maya, what about you? Um, I have a concept for a series that I would love to make. That would be really great if I just had all of the money in the world and time to just <laughs> make that. I would, yeah, I would love to take an idea that I created from entirely and bring it to fruition. Can you give us like a hint of what that would be? Yeah, um, it's actually this story um, of different sex workers that are all kind of in different walks of life. So, like there's when the Started. There's one that's younger and like maybe single and queer and then there's one that's like married and has kids and it's just I, I worked at a fetish dungeon and um, when I worked there there was like you know there was 
myself working there as like a 22 year old girl but then there was like a mom there that who was working there to take care of her kid and I kind of would like to do a show that shows people how like multifaceted we all are because mm. I feel like a lot of times people see sex workers and see us as really one dimensional yeah I love that actually I think Thank that's you. really clever <laughs> um Victoria how about you um I think I have a pretty relatable classic answer I would love to create and star in something that very closely reflects my actual life. Mm. Um, I think it could be very educational and exciting, and it could just be me already starring in my own movie. <laughs> the most fun thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to just really understand how normal it is to know a sex worker, mm -hmm. and how we all know sex workers, and have always. Mm -hmm. and. I think that it would be very fun to see a normal girl from the suburbs growing up in a Roman Catholic family end up thriving in the porn industry and discovering who she is. Mm -hmm. And then Casey, do you have that answer or do you already have amazing budgets in your I do have a, I do, dream I do projects? I do have amazing budgets and, I, and, I, and like that, is, that is half of my answer is I get to shoot what I want to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, I get complete creative freedom over my projects, and I do have someone. It's not pirates level money, but I don't need pirates level money. Mm -hmm. That I have, what I feel like is plenty of money to make my movies in a way that I can pay people what they want to get paid and have completely reasonable days on set and get the locations that like all like my money isn't my problem. Mm -hmm. That being said, if someone was like, "Here's a check for one million dollars." Mm -hmm. I wouldn't make a porno. Mm. <laughs> I, I think I'd agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. It's really the answer. If someone yeah. handed me that money, I'm going to convince them that this money is better spent making not an adult project. Mm, interesting. Interesting. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. Wait, you have guys. to answer the question. Uh, <laughs> no, I want, I, I'm I have genuinely zero, curious. I have literally zero ideas. <laughs> <laughs> if someone gave me like pirates level money, I go to the fucking Bahamas. Yeah. Like I'm... That's a completely reasonable answer yes. to the question. <laughs> is, um... Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, you know, I stopped shooting features a while ago. I only shoot scenes that are given to me. And so I have not been like, thinking about doing anything which is fine so i would say if anything i might do um like a documentary cool okay because like cool. what what i love and what like why this podcast is important to me is like showing the world what like sex workers and adult actors are really like and like delving into like the person behind the yeah. gaping yeah. asshole <laughs> yeah. I, actually, you know I, mean? so poetic. I actually think you would make an amazing documentary thank you mm -hmm. thank you I'm yes. signing a contract to do one right now. Yes. That'd be really cool. Well, we'll talk about that some other time. Later. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for joining. I know there was a little bit of glitchiness. I'm very sorry. Um, there's literally nothing I can do about that. The internet here is... It's iffy, but um, it should play back pretty well. So thank you guys for bearing with us. Um, thank you for joining us. If you really enjoyed this kind of like group session conversation, uh, drop me a line, let me know. Maybe I'll do more of these. This is pretty fun, but um, I will definitely try to go somewhere with a better internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you guys so much for joining us. And um, yeah, like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Hi, thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs>